So that is how we decide to honor a legend. One of the best players to ever play, probably the best player as of right now, to ever play for the Wild. And we spoil his retirement night with a 6-2 loss to the Nashville Predators. In a game we really couldn't afford to lose. We were still two points ahead of them coming into this game. And now that two-point lead is gone. The only advantage we have over them is that we still somehow have one game in hand. But we really could have started this homestead with a win, especially against a team like that, that is a division rival and now in the same spot that we are. We really could have used that win. And St. Louis didn't win either today. Sure, they got a point out of a game against Winnipeg, but they didn't win. So we are four points behind St. Louis, and so is Nashville. We still have a game in hand, so we're still third in the Central. But we can't afford to lose any more games. We have got to figure this out. But let's see if we can find any answers through the game notes that I took. And don't worry about any of that stuff back there. It's not important. I just managed to get back and watch the game as soon as I flew into Arizona. So, the game starts out, obviously, with Miko Koivu's retirement ceremony. Very good, very well-deserved to have him actually retired. Nobody else should wear number nine from Minnesota, so that's good. Game ends up starting with a fight from Marcus Foligno and Luke Cunning. Right off the bat, trying to see if we can get some life into the home crowd, and it, it kind of works, but not really. I mean, it definitely gets the game interesting to start. But then at 14.09 left in the first period, Nashville's Ryan Johansson takes a slashing penalty. Good, right? We had the power, the first power play in the game. And this is coming against a penalty kill that is better than ours, but not invincible. Or at least it shouldn't be. And the first power play for us looked pretty good. There was solid movement, close chances, but what would become a theme in this game, nothing managed to get through the net. Not because David Riddick was really outstanding, but he didn't need to be. There were 29 block shots. For Nashville. Tw Nashville blocked 29 of our shots. And that continued to come come up every time. And they also brought in Mikkel Granlund. Remember the trade Mikkel Granlund to Kevin Fiala. Brought him in to talk about Mikkel Koivu. And I remember got flashbacks of 2013-2014 against Colorado. Love that series. Love that. Would love to get more of that. But unfortunately... Philip Forsberg ruins the party, his 30th of the season. At 11.36 left to go in the first. Assists went to Fabro, his 17th of the season, and Duchesne with his 27th. Basically, basically, Fabro fired the shot from the point. Forsberg deflected it in front. Really nothing you can do there. It's just a bad bounce. Good deflection. Maybe move Forsberg out of the way, but I don't know who the wild defender was that was in front of him. And that was actually the first shot of the game for Nashville. We were putting the pressure on them. We were winning the shots department early. But the first shot of the game goes in for them. So it kind of sucks the life out of the building a little bit. And I keep getting reminders every time I look at the screen that Roman Yossi still exists. And he's still really good. Yes, Kale McCarr is getting all the praise and accolades right now but don't forget Roman Yossi is still as good as advertised and he proved that here I think he scored twice in this game so he was he was definitely he was definitely working around doing everything for Nashville basically the utility man their sweet their Swiss army knife of that team but luckily while I managed to get back into it a goal from Matt Boldy his 12th of the season now he's at his number with 6.57 left to go in the first period, assisted by Goudreau, his 19th of the season, and Fiala, his 34th of the season. Basically what happened was Kevin Fiala speeds through the zone on his own, manages to get past a couple, a couple national defenders, gets the puck to Goudreau, he fires a shot, trickles through over to Boldy, who's just sitting at a very tight corner near post, and just sneaks it right in between the arm and the post of David Riddick. And we're tied 1-1. So thank God for Matt Boldy because he's always been like that one 
that one bright spot, that one young guy. It makes me think that we should bring up Marco Rossi every time we lose faceoffs, which were kind of an issue here, but also kind of not. It says here, Predators won the faceoff percentage, 53% to 47%. That's not too terrible. You can still work with that. It's not as bad as, oh, what was the night we had 60% or we lost 60% of the faceoffs? That one was brutal. This you can kind of work with. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. At 6.02 left in the first period, John Merrill gets an interference penalty, which sucks because Nashville's power play is one of the better ones in the league. I think they're seventh in the league on their power play. And they have Philip Forsberg acting as their Ovechkin. That is how... That is how scary that power play can be for the Predators. But luckily, it doesn't strike here. Wild get very, a very good kill and managed to clear it off. Good clear by Dumba. And we almost get a chance going the other way as soon as this kill's over, but puck is bouncing and nobody can really control it. I'm just looking down my notes here. Good hustle by Dewar, good save by Kakinen. This is after the penalty. And then they replay. Miko Koivu sending a hit on Nicholas Cronwall back in November 1st, 2011 to win a game in overtime, which was a... I didn't know that that game existed. I didn't watch the lot at that time. But it seems pretty cool. And then something odd happens at the end of the first. With three seconds, 3.9 seconds left, Boldy gets a shot that ends up hitting the post. It's squirming around in the crease. Somehow... Fiala's in the crease already. There's a couple more Predators going in. The puck is still sitting there. Riddick has no idea where it is. The horn goes off. The, guy, the ref behind the net clearly sees the puck. It's not in. It's staying out. And nothing comes of it. And because of the craziness that happened with that, the refs just say, you know what? We don't need these three seconds. Let's just end the period. So that's what they do. So after the first... Minnesota is leading in the shots department 9-5, to five, and it's a 1-1 game. It's close, and both teams are battling back and forth. So it's looking good early on. Then the second period starts off at 18.06. Fabro for Nashville ends up getting hit in the face with a puck, and it's one of those ones where it bounces off of his shoulder and directs into his face, so it doesn't feel good. But luckily, he was able to get up. Then at 16:28, Matt Boldy gets a slashing penalty and one that it wouldn't be called if he actually, you know, didn't break the stick. But, of course, six broken. There's clear evidence there, blah, blah. And Nashville had a problem in this game. A lot of their six were breaking. So I don't know if that was on purpose or accident. Or they were just gripping it too hard. Whatever. But Minnesota has to kill off a Nashville power play. They still managed to do that, though. Kakinen gets some incredible stops on this. Erickson Eck gets a couple clears. And Boldy nearly goes the other way again, right out of the box. And it's a much more open period than the first period was. The first period was kind of tight, contested. Nobody could really move through the neutral zone very easily. This second one was a lot more back and forth, a lot more flowing. So, you'd hope there'd be more goals. And there are more goals. At 12.20, well, before we get to those goals, 12.26, Tolvin and Stick ends up exploding on a shot. You see, like I said, Nashville had a problem with a bunch of exploding sticks. This one actually interferes with a pass of theirs, so good stick from somebody on the wild, wild ghost defense. We love to have a ghost defense. And Dean Evison in this game kept trying to match up the grief line with Nashville's first line, which he sometimes was able to do, but sometimes he kind of had to risk it. And sometimes it would come back to bite them. And it did here. Yossi gets his 16th goal of the season at 11-16 left in the second. Assists go to Cousins, his 8th of the season. And Tomasino, his 14th of the season. And this one is one that one Kakinen should have gotten because it squirmed through. So anytime a puck squirmed through like that, you should have saved it. But another thing is Roman Yossi just went into the slot, the high slot, where the most dangerous chances are, and somehow nobody manages to knock him off the puck, and he backhands this shot right under the arm of Kakinen. And because of that, Nashville is up 2-1 to one on a shot that, I swear, if you look at it, I'm still baffled as to how nobody managed to pick him up as he was going through the slot. It didn't make any sense. But... 
It's Roman Yossi. He's always good like that. It sucks to give up a goal like that. But it wasn't like... But I was honestly giving Kakinen the benefit of the doubt until that goal. Because he had made some pretty good saves that had kept us in this game. He had kept us in this game. Like I said, he was rolling early on in the first, making a bunch of great saves. And of course, giving up the first shot obviously doesn't look good, but he bounced back. He was looking somewhat confident in the net. And luckily, that confidence started to spread more to the other team. When Jordan Greenway gets his fifth of the season at 850 from Marcus Felino. Felino got his 21st assist of the season. This one was a sick goal to watch. It was a three on two for Minnesota. Felino gets the puck to Greenway. He drives straight to the net, and he ends up shooting far side on David Riddick, and the whole building goes nuts. We're tied 2-2 from a guy who hasn't scored in 20 games. It's big. It's pandemonium. But it wouldn't be Minnesota if they didn't decide, you know what? Let's just give up another goal to Nashville 50 seconds later. That's right. 50 seconds later. Philip Tomasino gets his ninth of the season at eight minutes on the dot. Cousins gets his ninth assist. McCarron gets his sixth assist. This shot basically, basically the wild defense just kind of fell apart here. Shot is on Kakinen. He tries to control the rebound as best he can, but it's one of those shots where it's on the ice. He pad saves it, bounces right out to Tomasino, who is wide open. He is wide open on the other side of the ice, has free real estate, and of course he buries it. So 50 seconds later, after the building goes nuts, that happens. And that kind of stalled out the wild for pretty much the rest of the game. Nothing really, nothing really went right for them after that. And it wasn't like the wild were, you know, giving up right after that. They were still kind of trying in the second period. And they had opportunities to do it. Sissing's got a tripping penalty at 4.49 left. And basically, it's the only good play from Dmitry Kulikov that I saw. Especially when I get to the third period. Because he manages to hustle onto this puck and goes right past Sissons. Sissons had to slash at his legs and is able to draw a penalty. But again, Minnesota is having way too many shots blocked from the point, And they can't enter the zone which becomes a, a much bigger theme in the third period. Oh, and Kakinen had to make a shorthanded save, which is a problem that we have been having. There have been a lot of shorthanded opportunities for teams that shouldn't get them. They shouldn't get them on a power play. That If you give up a shorthanded opportunity, something went wrong. And things have been going wrong on the special teams, and they need to be fixed immediately. <sighs> It just gets so much worse from here because I'm looking at my notes and none of them look good. From here on out, they just look... I can just re-envision myself screaming at my TV. My roommates all know that I'm doing it. I'm kind of surprised one of them hasn't, like, you know, knocked on my door or, like, broken into it and told me to shut up. But, it's, oh, man, it just gets so much worse. All right, let's attack this head on. So, end of the second period, basically, there's a bunch of Aaron passes for Minnesota. Things are starting to go wrong for Minnesota, and it gets worse because with 12 seconds left in the period, Jared Spurgeon takes a slashing penalty, and again, it's like the Boldy slashing penalty. Literally, his stick broke, and there is evidence right there. If his stick doesn't break, I'm willing to bet they don't call. But can't really control the stick because, you know, it's a stick. It's not a human object. So he slashes it, stick breaks, just like the pencil I threw at the door. And Wild have to go into the period down a man. Shots in that period were 20 to 18 in favor of Minnesota. And by that period, Nashville had blocked 20 shots through two. Minnesota had only blocked nine. That is how lopsided that statistic was. And I kept thinking, like, Nashville is not going to be able to, you know, keep this up. Sorry about that. Nashville's not going to be able to keep this up, or at least that's my thought, because if they're taking so many shots, and especially in the third period, there were some shots on some Nashville defenders that just looked brutal to take. 
One's in the back, one's on the ankle. They just, they just took a beating physically. And I think we out, we barely out hit them 20 to 18. It was a physical division rivalry. So it makes sense. Nothing dirty in this game like the last two from really either side. More or less, it's just, again, a division rivalry. So they're going to try to let some stuff go. But now we get to the third period. And I hadn't put in any other notes until Roman Yossi got a power play goal. His 17th of the season and second of the game with 18.55 left to go in the game. The assist came from Granlund. 35th of the season, great. And Philip Forsberg gets his 23rd of the, of 23rd assist of the season. Basically, why Nashville was so good in this game is that they pressured. They made it difficult for Minnesota to get out of the zone. And if Minnesota had applied that to this penalty kill, I'm willing to bet it doesn't go in because this goal was just Granlund and Yossi at the point just playing catch. No wild defender wanted to attack them whatsoever because they were just afraid so they kept passing back and forth eventually Yossi gets a one-timer there's traffic in front Greenway tries to block it in front he just ends up screening Kakinen and it's 4-2 great so at 15:38, I have a note Kirill was grinding down oh yeah 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 Kirill was trying his hardest because he was the only one who seemed to take advice and seemed to catch Nashville in a bind sometimes Kirill Kaprizov would just single-handedly outskate and outwork everybody in the Nashville zone and get those guys tired. But then the puck would bounce out of the zone and they'd get, they'd get let off the hook. And it just kept going further and further and further down the rabbit hole. But there were still chances. 14-33, Nashville, Nashville's Ekholm, Matthias Ekholm gets a tripping penalty. So there's still another chance. But once again, there are so many blocked shots that nothing gets through. Kaprizov also gets taken down in this penalty. But nothing gets called for that, even though, you know, he was kind of yanked down behind the net. But it's the way it goes. And you got to be better than that. And this game, 29 blocked shots for Nashville. That's the most... Any team has blocked shots from Minnesota this season. That is the most the Wild have ever had blocked on them this season. And, of course, it's 4-2. to two. The game continues to stall out. Nashville just has to play defense, which they've been doing pretty good the whole time. And Minnesota just becomes insane because the definition of insanity is, you know, what did Einstein say? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. They did that. They just kept dumping the puck into the zone and not chasing it and expecting to get it. So every time they dumped the puck into the zone, it'd always be our defenseman or just whoever was on the ice at that point. But specifically our defenseman would just dump it in and just hope one of the forwards would go after it because nobody decided to skate it into the zone and they could have. They had, they had opportunities to do so, but they didn't. And because of that, eventually, Everson pulls the goalie. We try to get some sort of offense. Doesn't work. And then, then the, the score gets out of hand. It becomes 6-2 to two when it was reality a 4-2 game. So we end up losing it. We end up losing it. The third period was embarrassing for us. Absolutely awful. Power plays. Nashville was 1 for 3. We were 0 for 3. Wasn't good at all. Nashville had 29 block shots. We had 12. Total shots that hit the net. We beat them. We had 28 shots. They had only 25. As for the standings, both teams are now tied with 72 points. We, like I said, have a game in hand. Our record now, 34, 20, and 4 with 72 points. Tied, but still in the third in the central. And our next game is Wednesday night, 6.30 Eastern versus Boston, and it's TNT primetime. So let's just chalk this one up to they played four games in six days, and now we get a three-game break to try and regroup and get some points and get some much-needed wins. So anyways, that is it for this video. Again, I will keep up with the Wild throughout the rest of the season. But like, subscribe. 
Do all that good stuff, and I'll talk to you later.